Hello everybody, we're going to be looking at three-dimensional shapes, looking at volume and surface area of a selection of three-dimensional shapes. This, of course, is extremely important in all forms of construction, going back thousands of years to ancient buildings like the Great Pyramid, uh, Great Wall of China, skyscrapers today that we see are basically just giant cuboids. So if you're going to see how much glass you need for the windows, that would be the surface area. If you're trying to see how much space you can fit in a container, that's a volume. So, you know, it's, it's a very useful thing that goes back a long way. But we're going to be looking at how to calculate these things today. So volume, of course, is the amount of space inside, for example, how much water you could use to fill up a tank. And the volume for a simple cuboid is calculated by doing the length times the width times the height, LWH. So in this case, we've got 10 times 2 times 3, which is just going to be 60 centimeter cubed as volume is measured in cubes, whether it's centimeter cubes or meter cubes and so on. Now, surface area is always more complicated than volume. And here's the formula for the surface area. It's two times everything in the bracket, where in the bracket is the length times the width. So that would be 10 times three, which would be this blue bit. The width times the height, that's three times two, which is this red one. And the length, 10 times the height, two, which is this yellow section in the front here. So we've got two times each of these three faces that we see. Why two times each of the three faces that we see? Well, you need to count up the two-dimensional surfaces, the two-dimensional areas on the shape. For example, if you had a present that you were going to wrap for your family at Christmas, the amount of wrapping paper that you wrap the box in is a two-dimensional surface. So we've got the top, we've got the right, and we've got the front. But what we've forgotten is that there's two lots of those because there's also the left, which is the same as the red one. There's the bottom, which is the same as the blue one. And there's the back, which is the same as that front yellow one. So you've got the top, bottom, right, left, front, and back, which is where this two comes in. So essentially all you're doing is with this LWWH LH is you're getting these rectangular areas of the red, blue, and yellow faces and then you're doubling them for the back, the bottom, and the left. So let's see what happens there. So we've got two times length times width would be 30, 10 times 3. Then W, width times height, is 6. And then length times height is going to be 20. So we've got two lots of 30 plus 6 plus 20 is 56. And so the final answer is 112 centimeter squared is the surface area of this cuboid. Looking now into the volume of this prism, the volume of the prism is always, it is the volume is the area, can I go back and do that again? Da, 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 da. Also, I'm just gonna have that up here. Oops. Okay, we're now going to be looking at the volume of the prism. So the prism is any shape where you've got a cross section, in this case that would be this triangular face, that's pulled along a length and has the same cross section throughout the whole shape. Okay? A cylinder, by the way, is another example of a prism because a cylinder is a circle pulled up by the height. So a cylinder is another example of a prism. So what we do here is we get the area of the base, it's that base area, times the length, which in this case is 10 into the page. So the volume of this prison is the area of this base, area of the triangle is a half, five, times four, times that length, 10. So we end up with 10, which is the area of this base, times by 10, the area on the length, and we get the volume of this prison to be 100 centimeter cubed. If you're going to do the surface area of a prism, a bit more complicated, you need to see that there are five faces. You've got the front and back triangle, which we just calculated the area was, was 10. Then you've got this back rectangle here, which would be 40. This 
bottom rectangle on the base here, 5 times 10 is 50. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you've got this other rectangle. So you've got five faces in total. And then you would need Pythagoras' theorem to get the length of this diagonal. And then you would do length times width. So surface area is always more complicated than the volume, especially in the case of a prism. You'd need Pythagoras' theorem unless you were given that slope. Okay, volume of a cylinder is pi r squared, which is the area of this circle at the bottom, times by the height h, in this case is 5. We have a radius of 4 and a height of 5. So the volume is just this base times the height. So it's pi r squared, r is 4, so we've got 16 times pi, I'm just going to leave that as pi rather than do 3.14, times by the height, times by 5, and so you get... 80 pi centimeter cubed for the volume of this cylinder. Sometimes questions will ask, give your answer in terms of pi, and that's how you would do it. You would just leave the pi symbol as it is. Now, moving on to surface area of a cylinder, a lot more difficult. So the surface area of a cylinder, just to show you the formula to begin with, is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi rh. Where on earth does all that come from? Well, the 2 pi r squared bit is easy enough to understand. The area of a circle is pi r squared. And so we've got this circle up here, making the top. And we've got this circle down here, forming the bottom. And so the 2 pi r squared is just the two areas of the top and the bottom. But what's the surface area of the curved bit around left and right? Well, if you imagine a tin of beans with a label on it, and then when you peel the label off, and if you haven't done this before, give it a shot, you will find it is a rectangle. A lot of people find that difficult to understand, but if you uncurl the curved surface around this cylinder, it will curl out to a rectangle. The height of the cylinder will be the height of this rectangle here, and the length all the way around the length of this rectangle is the length all the way around the cylinder, which is our circumference of the circle, 2 pi r. So that's where it comes from. So if I'm going to calculate the surface area of this cylinder, I first of all do the two circles, top and bottom, which is 2 pi r squared, which is 2 times 4 times 4, 4 squared is 16, 32 pi. That is the area of the top and bottom. And then I've got 2 times pi times 4 times the height of 5. And so I've got top and bottom, 32 pi, plus 40 pi for the area of the rectangle. And so finally, 72 pi is the oops, centimeter squared. 72 pi centimeter squared is the surface area of this cylinder. Again, cylinder is a very difficult one to remember for calculating the surface area, but if you can picture the net here, that will make it a lot easier. Okay, to calculate the volume of any pyramid, like so, it is the one-third the volume of the containing cuboid. So if you imagine here, we have a containing cuboid, and we're just going to use the same dimensions for the cuboid we had previously, 2 by 3 by 10. This cylinder is a third of 2 times 3 times 10. It's a third the volume of our cuboid, which was 60 centimeter cubed. So the volume of this pyramid is 20 centimeter cubed. Similarly to the pyramid, a cone is one-third of the volume of the containing cylinder. So again, we're using the same dimensions we had for our cylinder last time, four, a radius of 4 and a height of 5, and we're going to find the volume of this cone. So it is just one-third pi r squared h, which is one-third and r squared is 16 times the height 5, which is 80. So we've got 1 third times 80 pi. And so we've got 80 over 3 
pi centimeter squared. And you can do 80 divided by three in the calculator and get the decimal, and you can change pi to 3.14 to get the decimal if you wish. But that's the idea. Cone, one third the volume of the containing cylinder. Surface area of a cone, another difficult one to remember, I'm afraid. It's pi r squared, which is that area of the circle on the bottom. So we've got 16 pi plus pi times the radius times this slope diagonal L. And that gives you the curved area around here. Very difficult to visualize on a net, that one difficult to calculate. But this is the formula anyway. And so you would have pi times 4 times, in this case, using Pythagoras to get this length from the radius of 4 height of 5, 6.4. You get 6.4 as the length after doing Pythagoras. And so we finally have 16 pi plus 25.6 pi. And the final answer, therefore, is 41.6 pi for the surface area of this cone. Final shape to calculate the volume of a sphere, it is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So in this case, we have a radius of 10. All spheres are the same shape. It doesn't matter. They're just different in size. So all you ever need is the radius and you know everything you need to know about the sphere. So we've got 4 thirds times pi times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is cubed, which is 1,000. So we've got 4 thirds times 1,000 pi centimeter cubed. And again, you can do 4 times 1,000 divided by 3 to get the decimal and times by pi if you wish. Surface area of this sphere is 4 pi r squared. Notice that for the volume, formulas in terms of r cubed, which makes sense. We've got centimeter cubes. And for the surface area, it's in terms of r squared, which makes sense. We're dealing with squares, centimeter squares for a surface area. So we've got 4 times pi times 10 squared. And so we have 400 pi centimeter squared for the surface area of that sphere. Okay, let's have a look at a basic example here. Uh, okay, let's have a look at a basic example here of how to calculate the surface area of this cylinder. So what we'll need to do is get our formula for the... Oops. Why did that happen? Okay, let's have a look at a base example here. We're going to calculate the surface area of this cylinder. So we just need the formula for our surface area of the cylinder, which, if you recall, was... 2 pi r squared for these two circles plus 2 pi r h for the surface area of the curved bit around left and right. So we get radius of 2, 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8. So we have 8 pi for the circle on the top and the bottom. And then substituting in for r and h, we have 2 pi times r, which is 2, times height, which is 5. And so we have 8 pi plus 10, 20 pi. And so final answer is 28 pi. And if the question did ask you, leave your answer in terms of pi, this is exactly how you would... And if the question did ask you to leave your answer in terms of pi, this is exactly how you would have to leave it with this pi at the end. You wouldn't convert to a decimal. And I've forgotten my centimeter squared. Okay, time. Okay, time for an exam style question here. This is a difficult one. It's the surface area of a cylinder and it involves algebra. It's got a diameter of 2x and a height of x. Very difficult question to answer this. If you think you can do it, please post your answers in the comment section or you can email me directly. My name is Adam, tutor for Sherpa or any other Sherpa tutor will be able to give you the answer if you contact them. Good luck with this one, guys. It's a toughie.